Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be building a device that's going to let us skip through a whole bunch of samples whilst Ableton's playing and we can pick which sample best fits our track. So to give you an example, we could be playing a kick and bass loop like this. And then we could be listening to a hi-hat like this with it. And we might want to audition a bunch of different hi-hats to see which one fits best in the track. And there are a couple ways that we can achieve this. And I'm going to be showing you uh, both of those methods that I know of uh, in order to do that. So you can um, learn how to quickly move through samples to select the right one that fits your track. This can be really helpful when you're maybe trying to find a snare drum that fits your track. Um, and we're gonna add a couple of other parameters as well that's gonna let you very quickly um, also manipulate that sound a little bit if you find the right sound, but maybe it's the sample's too long or you need to transpose it so that it fits in your track. So let's look at the first way of doing it. What we need is we need to go ahead and we grab an instrument, we come in here and we grab a simpler. And both of these techniques is done with a simpler. So we can come down here to samples and we can grab one of uh, Mr. Bill's hi-hats that he's generously shared with us. Okay, so 25, let's grab that, drop that into the sample. So now if I play everything that I've got, I'll just turn these channels off. Um, let's have a listen how that sounds. Okay, so I've got that sample playing. And I am able to click this little button in here, and this enables the hot swap, okay? So if I enable that and I press play, I can double click on another sample and it swaps it in, okay? So I could go through all my sample packs and I could just double click what I wanted and it'll drop it in there. That's one way of doing it. Um, and then what we could also do is if we just chuck on the one shot, which we should turn on, um, we could go ahead and, and group this and we could go ahead and turn on, um, we could right click and we can map the fade out um, to a parameter, so we could put that there. We could re-enable the hot swap, and we can play through these hats, and then I could adjust the fade out uh, to ensure that I've got the result that I'm after. Uh, and I accidentally dropped in a new sample. So you can see that this method is, it's pretty good, but it's not really flawless. Um, and it's easy to kind of lose what you've done, um, especially if you want to start changing around parameters. So that's one way of doing things. Um, you can do it that way if you like, but I prefer a bit of a different method. So I'm just going to delete that and start fresh again. I'm going to end up putting the same thing in, but you know. Uh, so I'm going to grab a simpler, drop it back on that channel. All right, so let's uh, do something. We'll put it on one shot. We're gonna right click this and we're gonna go group. Okay, so we've made a group with that simpler inside of it. We can open up the chain selector so it shows us the chains. And then we can open up the macro knobs, okay? So we've got the sample, we can see the chains, see the macro, macro knobs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up samples. We're gonna grab three different samples. now. Um, I'm going to just do this simply and quickly, but later on I'm going to be releasing this device with um, all the bells and whistles and a whole heap of samples loaded into it. So just keep an eye out for that. So firstly, I'm going to load in this hi-hat and let's listen to it. Okay, so I've got the sample loaded in. What I want to do is I want to map a bunch of controls. Okay, so I'm going to right click this and I'm going to map the fade in to macro one, the fade out, sorry, macro two, the fade out to macro three, and then the transpose to macro four. Okay, the volume to macro five, um, I'll right click that and set it to default. So negative 12 is the default value. Um, and then what I could do is I could um, grab a utility and I could pop it on the end of that one. And I could right click the balance and I can map that to macro um, 
that macro and I could right click and set that to center. Um, and then what I could do as well is, mm, that's really all I want to do for now. Um, that's as involved as it needs to be for this very moment. So that gives us a whole bunch of things to play with. So if I right click that, set that back to default and play that again, I can tighten up that sample by using the fade. which is very helpful. I could even fade in a bit for the attack. I could transpose, ch change the volume, and then pan, okay? So that's giving me a bunch of features, but how do I quickly transition between that sound and another sound to see whether one works a little bit better than the other? So I'm gonna set that back to default, um, so we'll just have a small fade off the end that's suitable um, and then everything else is at a default value. So I'm just going to click on this chain and I'm going to go control D to duplicate it. Okay. So now I have two versions of that. It's the exact same hi-hat. So let's find a better, a, not a better, but a different sounding hi-hat. Okay, that's stabby and nice. It's very distinctly different to the first one. Um, and then we'll go Control D and we'll get another one. Okay, that has quite a different sound as well. So we'll pop that on there. So now I have three very different sounding um, open hats. I've got all the parameters mapped. And if I change the fade in here, it will change the fade in on all of them. So I can control all of these simplers just with these same controls, okay? But now if I play it, they all play at the same time and they all play over top of one another. And maybe you would want that in some certain circumstances, but what I'm trying to achieve here is a way of quickly moving through different samples. So then I open up the chain, okay? And up here I have a chain selector. Okay, and we're gonna to need to map that. So basically what we can use this for is we could load potentially from zero up to 127 samples inside of this. And then we can use the selector to systematically move through them and select them, okay? So at the moment, all of the samples are on the same, um, on the same one, right? So it's on, they're all on zero. So they're all gonna play at the same time. But if I grab that and move it off and put it on one one, and if I grab that and put it on two two, technically, technically now they're all on different chains, okay? And then I can select with the selector which chain I want to be playing at that particular time. So if I right click this and I map that to macro one, now that is the selector. So if I click on this, um, instead of using my mouse to change it, um, I'm going to use the keys on my keyboard. So I'm going to press the up arrow. Okay. The reason I'm doing that is just because one button press is going to move it once uh, on my mouse. I'm not always that accurate and I just want to get it right when I'm doing the video. So let's press play and I'm going to press the up arrow and I've changed the sample. I'm going to press it again. I've changed the sample. I can come to the fade out. And I've tightened that up. If I then come back to the chain selector and I move down, I've moved down, it's the other sound and the fade is still applied to it. Move all the way down. It's the first sample and the fade is applied to it, right? So if I right click that, set that back to default. Um, now I have a way of loading in a whole heap of different samples and very quickly just mashing through the up arrow or the down arrow and finding a sample that fits my track. So I could do this with snares, I could do with this with kick drums, bass lines, I could do this with literally anything. And I could set it up so that I, when I open up Ableton, uh, I could open up a template that actually already has all of the stuff loaded into it. So I could have a drum group and I could have a bunch of these different devices. So I could call this one Control R Open Hat Rack. Then I could make a closed hat rack. Then I could make a snare rack. I could make a bunch of racks. I could save them all as devices inside of here by just clicking, dragging and dropping and, and naming it. And then anytime I wanted 
uh, hats and I wanted to start arranging them, I could just quickly write in the MIDI uh, and then I could go through all of my samples and find the samples that I like. I could even start mixing them a bit because I can pan them. I can transpose them to fit my it fit in my track a little bit better if I needed. Um, and I can control the volume. And you could put more parameters in there as well if you wanted to control different things. So this is a really cool way of being able to quickly swap through samples and find something really cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a open hat rack with 120 samples loaded into it and all of the stuff mapped. I'm going to do it for snares as well. I'm going to do it for a bunch of different parameters. And uh, if I create all of the sounds myself, I'm going to probably put that up online for like three or four dollars or five dollars or something for a download. If I'm using other people's samples, then I'll just make the device. Uh, and as long as the samples that I'm using are available uh, and free to use. So um, I would have to check that um, they're able just to be given away for free. I believe that Mr. Bill stuff is. I could make a rack with all of his open hats and stuff. And I could just upload that and give it away to you guys for free. So depending on whether I use my own samples or somebody else's, um, that'll dictate whether it costs or not. And I think I'll probably make a few of those devices. They're really cool uh, and they're handy for you guys. You can just grab them and instantly you've got a whole heap of samples that you can go through um, and it makes things very easy. So hopefully you enjoyed that video. I'm going to be coming at you with some more. Uh, so stay tuned. See you guys soon.